today I'm going to be talking about faith. I'm going to show you guys know a little bit about faith. Let's start our Let's start with reading Mark 5. Jesus again had again crossed over by the boat to the other side of the lake. A large group gathered around him while he was by the lake. When one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came and seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and alive. So Jesus went with him. A large cloud, crowd followed him and pressed around him. And a woman has there who had been subjected to pleading, pleading for 12 years. She has suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and has spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. Then she heard about Jesus. She came behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just touch his cloak, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realized the power had gone out of him, he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my cloak? And you see the people crowd, crowding against you, his disciple answered, And yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Amen. Amen. So here we see that the, we read that a woman who was sick for 12 years just being healed immediately in seconds because of her faith. This shows how uh, someone having faith is so powerful. And we can kind of compare faith with power. You know, faith without power is nothing. And power without faith is nothing. So this shows how the faith was activated, the power was activated by her faith. You know, um, we have faith inside of us. You know, God has already placed faith inside of us, but we just need to activate that, you know, that faith to get power. See, it says in the word, she came and thought, just even if I touch his clothes, that I would be healed. And that was her faith. And you will see that before Jesus even noticed who touched him, the woman was already healed because of her faith. So she had the faith to touch him. The faith already activated the power for her healing. So by the time she turned around, by the time Jesus turned around, she was already healed. See, Jesus didn't turn around. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. By the time he, he was looking around to see who had done it, she was already on the ground, healed, and freed from her suffering that she had been suffering for 12 years. So, this answers our questions that whenever we need healing and whenever we need to get something done, we need to move forward. This shows how faith will activate that power that power to be healed, that power to move forward, that power to get up, um, to do stuff, to be delivered from sins. We need, you know, we need that faith. We need to take that faith forward. Um, God, one thing God doesn't answer is to our emotions. I realized that a long time ago. Uh, when we're crying and when we're, oh God, please do this for us. And God is looking down and saying, where is your faith that I've placed in you? He does not answer to our emotions all the time. He answers to our faith. He answers to our actions. Amen. She came out here and, you know, faith is not blind. 
um, Abraham, he did not know what he was doing, but he was he was doing he was going. You know, he was he was asking. Faith without action is not power. You know, when we need faith and we want God to do something for us, we need to um, have action to get that done. Um, like I said, God doesn't answer to our emotion, but he answers to our faith and our action. The longer you take to trust him, the longer you wait. <laughs> so, if we're people having faith every morning, getting up every morning with faith, uh, I mean, this nation would be amazing. <laughs> if we had that much faith to do stuff, to get things done, to do our work, to do to go to work in faith, to go to, go to school in faith, you know? We need to get up in the morning and say, we're going to go in the spirit to work. We're going to go to school in the spirit. We're going to go to church in the spirit. Not only in the natural, but we need to take, you know, that faith with us. Um, faith is compared to the same thing as a blindfolded person walking on the street, not knowing where he's going. You know, when there's car coming, faith is like that. Faith is... Just ultimate trust in, in Christ, you know. To uh, when you're walking on the street blindfolded, you're you're trusting in God for God to walk you across the street. That is faith. You do not know where you're going. All you need is faith, and God has your way. Um. So, like I said, if we are to have the more faith, we are being made well the more. You know, our faith is what's going to separate us from those non-believers. Because they go about works and working and trying to prove themselves and uh, relying on their own strength. But we do not rely on our strength, but the Lord's. You know, we trust in the Lord. Um, uh, people pray all the time because of peace. They say, they cry out to God and saying, um, oh Lord, please Please, peace in my heart. Please give me peace. One thing they don't know is they already have peace within them. The peace is already there because Christ died on the cross and he has given us all peace. What we need to be praying is for how to access that peace because that peace is already within us. It's already found. But most people don't know how to access that peace. Because they don't have faith and they don't have trust in the Lord. Peace comes by trusting. The more you trust, you don't have no nothing to worry about. That means you, your heart is at rest. So, you know, the Bible in Isaiah 9, 6 refers to Jesus as the Prince of Peace. It says, for the children will be born to us, the son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. So, that peace in life, we get it by believing in the Lord and having faith and taking that one step. You know, the more we trust, God will never put us to shame. The more we trust, the more we will have that peace, we'll access that peace. So don't pray for God give me peace, because we got the peace. Um, uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, the kind of life we are called to live here on earth. What kind of life are we called to live here on earth? I mean, as students, as parents, as workers, I mean, what kind of life did Christ call us to live? Uh, through faith, we are called to live, we are not called to live ordinary lives, but extraordinary ones Amen. for Christ. We are not ordinary people because we have been chosen by God. Amen. So, we need to stop living ordinary, uh, everyday waking up. We are different. Amen. And when we go to work or when we go to school, our neighbors or you know, our co-workers, our bosses, do they know we are Christians? Do they know we represent the kingdom of God? Or are we just, you know, getting up every morning and struggling and complaining? <laughs> Is that the kind of life we're supposed to be living? Are we supposed 
Because God has placed us here to present Him. Believe it or not, we are His, you know, His calling. We are supposed to represent Him. We are supposed to prepare the way of His kingdom to come down. He has nobody. He has us here on earth. And our job, our purpose here in life is to represent Christ. And we represent Christ not living ordinary lives. We're not supposed to get our ideas from the world, people who are not saved. We're not supposed to get our ideas from TV. We're supposed to be getting ideas from Christ. That comes only from meditating on the word and praying. So, uh, uh, Matthew 5, 14, here he talks about, you are the light of the world. The city on a hill cannot be hidden. So we are to live that extraordinary life and we are supposed to build our um, house on top of the hill so we can shine. So everybody who's passing by can see that house on top of the hill with a light. You know, so just everything in our life, we have purpose, not only plans, but God has purpose. He knew us. You know, Jeremiah 1, 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to all nations. So before we were even born, we were supposed to represent Christ. That's his purpose for us. I mean, everybody's gift is different. But there's a purpose. There's a purpose that we're supposed to represent him, him here on earth. We're not supposed to just get by to work. We're not supposed to get up and complete the job. We're supposed to be out there and be profiting to people. We're supposed to prophesy. We're supposed to tell the word of God. We are supposed to tell our co-workers and our uh, friends and neighbors and not only tell them but show them by the way we live. You know, we're, if God has called you to be a businessman, you're supposed to be great at that because you get your ideas from God. And you know when to come and when to get out. If you're called to be a teacher, you're supposed to get your ideas from above. And all the teachers are supposed to look at you and say, wow, that teacher is amazing. Let's go get ideas from her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're called to be a mother, you're supposed to be the best mom in your neighborhood. And all the moms are looking at you oh, and saying, yeah. I don't want to If you're supposed to be a student, you're more accountable. You're supposed to get up and study and show all the kids that you are extraordinary. Amen. And that your faith is in the Lord. And this is the kind of life we're supposed to be living in whatever we are called to do. Um, for all the things, you know, God, God has a plan and a purpose and a, uh, a way that he has set before, like I said, before he even, before we were even born. You know, he has a plan, and that plan only comes from knowing God. You do not know what your destiny is unless you read the Bible, and God will speak to you through your heart, and he will show you. Our main calling is to find that purpose in life. That's our main calling. Our main calling is to know him and to find that purpose and to live that destiny. There's a lot of people who are Christians that are, that are Christians, but they're not living according to what they're called. And they miss the chance. And God is, God is sitting there and saying, wow, like, there, there is this job that you need to complete that I formed you and I made you for. And you're not completing this job. So somebody else, he's going to send somebody else to complete the job. And it's, you missed out. Because all your blessings, all your happiness were supposed to come through that purpose that you were formed to be. And God will complete the job, whether he uses you or not. His word will be fulfilled. Amen. But is it a matter of responding to God? Amen. It's a matter of, it's never too late. I mean, God is a God of first chances, second chances, third chances. He gives chances. It's never too late to turn around and ask God, what is my purpose? Is it only to get up in the morning and to go to work? I mean, what is the purpose? There's people who are educated, but then... They're not working in their field because their calling is different. Their calling is to simply maybe be a missionary, maybe serve the Lord. So you gotta find you gotta find that um, specific purpose that you are called to do. And to do, like I said, to, to find that purpose, you need that faith. 
that activates that power, that activates it all to, to lead you to the direction. And you need faith every minute, every step. And God wanna see, God wanna see sometimes he you know, he doesn't tempt us, but he tests us. And he got he sees how strong we are, how how much we trust in him and how much you know our faith is in him. He doesn't want people that are weak. He wants people that are bold. And if we're all supposed to be standing up in Christ, we're supposed to be, we're suppo if we have faith, we can change nations. Yes. Imagine if everybody has faith and that much trust and is getting their power and their calling from God. I mean, we're going to be like, the world is going to come running to us and to get, you know, what is it? What is it? I mean, there's this um, Hollywood producer. She was a Christian woman. And all the Hollywood producers used to come to her. They're like, what is what is the newest thing? They used to get their ideas because she was so good. Because she gets her ideas from the Lord. And that's how we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to be influenced by this world. Um, and lastly, I'm going to talk about deliverance from living ordinary lives to living extraordinary lives. How that comes about. Uh, preparing God's coming, you know, are you prepared for Christ to come? Because we're all going to be uh, called uh, accountable. We're going to be accountable um, of the way we lived here on earth when we go in front of Christ. He's going to be, he's going to ask us, where were you when I given you all that time, when I given you all the health and I given you all the resources and the financial support, where were you? I was after you. Did you represent me? Did you did you tell that you know friend that you had that was suffering? Did she even know that you know you believed in Christ? Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to stand up. We're supposed to be bold. I mean, sometimes people would not agree, um, but we're still supposed to you know preach the gospel, whether they agree or not. Our job is to to preach it. He's we're an instrument. Yes. He's going to use us to preach it. But it's God that will change someone. Our our job is to preach. Our job is not to change hearts. That's his job. But we're still supposed to be preaching. Uh, I know in Matthew 25, it talks about the ten virgins. Uh, the ten virgins who, I think, yeah, there were ten. Uh, five of them had, they were ready. Five weren't. And this can be taken similarly as uh, 10 Christians, 10 Christians, five were ready, five weren't. Um, it shows how five of the virgins were ready to, uh, they were waiting for their husbands and they had uh, extra oil for their uh, lamps. So the other five, they were still believers. You know, just like some Christians, they still believed they were not ready. They were not ready. That means they were not representing Christ. They were just getting up every day, you know. Lukewarm Christians. You know, the Bible says, there's no lukewarm, there's no middle. Whether you're with Christ or not. Otherwise, you would get left like these brides did. Yeah. They were Christians, you know. They were all virgins. That represents that they are all Christians. But half. Half were ready, half weren't. Half were ready to go with their husbands, ready to go with Christ. So, yeah. The Christian who wait on God by praying and fasting and reading the word of God will find it. Will find that calling, that purpose in life. God will never, you know, put us to shame. He will never abandon us. He will, he's always there. Um, in the end, um, the Bible talks about in Revelation how um, at the end times, people are going to be uh, relaxing and enjoying weddings. And they will miss. They will not know that Christ has returned. They will miss because they're too busy uh, attending too many weddings, enjoying themselves instead of, instead of uh, praying and going in revival and uh, welcoming Christ back. So we need to uh, read, like, 
Check ourselves. Paul says, test if you are in faith. Examine yourself if you're in faith. You need to sit down and examine yourself. Are you in faith? Are you going to be that one of the five brides that are going to be, you know, that are going to be going? Or are you going to be the five that will stay? So we need to examine ourselves. Um, for those who love God, works everything out for the good. It doesn't matter how late it is. It doesn't matter if you're lacking faith. It doesn't matter if you're behind. God is... God of chances. Amen. He gives multiple chances, chance Amen. after chance after chance. Amen. I mean, um, even though, like, if you think things are going to be bad, He will turn all things, like I said, all things for the good of those who love Him. So He will turn and cause every situation that you are in for His good if you love Him. If you have faith, if you follow His commandments, He will cause everything to happen according to you know, according to his will. If it's his will, it will happen. Um, life um, is about letting the Holy Spirit discipline discipline us until uh, Christ returns. It's an ongoing discipline. Should nobody be perfect. You know, nobody's perfect. It's constantly, there's always something new to learn about. There's always something new to learn about. But if you stayed in the Lord for many years, and for somebody who did not stay in the Lord for, for that many years, I mean, you can see the difference. Obviously, there's this ongoing discipline should that happens. Discipline should um, starts from, you know, reading the Word of God and uh, praying. It, it can also be transferred as discipline in our actions, in our lives. Are we just, um, are we just taking, taking from people? Are we actually giving? Because uh, people see our actions. When, when I say live an extraordinary life, it's not only about, you know, I'm saying being great. It's about being great in your actions and the way you live your life. You know, are we on time? Because I'm, I'm a victim of that. I'm trying to improve. <laughs> I'm trying to work on that. Uh, are we on time? I mean, people see that. People see, are we on time? That will minister to them. Without you even saying anything, that would minister to them. I mean, uh, one time, and I'm going to use an example in college, that um, sometimes the work can be stressful. There's a lot of things to do. Um, people were pressuring me in the class to take an online exam with them, like to do the exam together. It was an online off-class exam. And I was really pressured. I didn't really have time to study for the exam because of... Uh, I've been preparing for other exams, so people were like, "Oh, we can get together, you know. We can we can take this exam together." And I thought about it. Uh, that's cheating. <laughs> you know, I can't do that because that would be cheating. It's not my effort being put into this exam. So they were pressuring me. Oh, can I come on? Let's take it. Hmm, thought about it, and I said, "I'd rather fail the exam than cheat." Cheat on this exam. I am not gonna cheat. And and I said no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take the exam with you guys. I'm gonna do it myself. Even if I fail, I will fail. You know? God God sees everything and he will work it. Even if I fail because he will work all things. Because the door that is open for me is only for me. The door that's open for you is only for you. Nobody can close that door. Yes. <laughs> Whether you fail the exam, but at least I did it honest. You know, nobody can take any place that seat. So one of one of the guy that was pressuring me to take the test, that really you know ministered to him. I'm like, wow. You know, she rather stand for you know for the kingdom of God than just cheat. So like little things we do, little things we stand for. We we'll minister to people, whether we see it or not. And, uh, when we're on time, when we're being honest, when we're honoring others, we we'll learn things. When we're okay, ready to take the ugliest job, you know, in our churches, in our schools, in our workplace, in our families. When we're ready to take that little, you know, dirtiest job ever, that is ministering to somebody out there. You know, you do not see, but God works through things like that. 
God, God will cause it to work. God is able to do all things. You know, He is able. So, um, honoring, you know, when we're honoring other people, um, our honor comes from discipline and humble, leading a humble life. Uh, it can be explained as uh, when you first come in a room or in a show, are you first to take that best seat in the room? Or are you supposed to take the back, the most, you know, horrible seat in the back? Honor is like when you take that horrible seat, when you come into a show or when you come into, you know, when you take that horrible seat, letting other people, you know, honoring other people to take that first seat, that's humbleness. And honor, honor it comes from humbleness because when you're humbling yourself, you can only go above. That's honor. You can't, when you walk in the room and you take the best seat, you can't get honor, you know, after that because you already have the seat. But when you take the dirtiest, you know, the dirtiest jobs in the last seat, you can only go higher from there, from humbleness. And humbleness, I'd rather take the, the honor that I get from Christ, you know, because we should not be honoring ourselves because there's no point. Honor only that comes from God is good. So it's it's taking that um, ownership and humbleness life from that comes from Christ. So um, how do we stop living ordinary and live extraordinarily? Um, it's no special. It's nothing more than reading the Bible, reading the Word of God, and praying and fasting and having faith. And that's the only way you can um, access that kingdom life. Because we are, you know, we are supposed to live. The kingdom of God is, is already here on earth. You know, because Christ died, it's already on earth. And we're supposed to live in that kingdom. We're not just supposed to be talking. And we got to watch out sometimes when we, the way we speak. Because we can really call things to existence. If we're negative... You know, the Bible says um, the heart speaks out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks out of the abundance of the heart. Yeah. Yeah. So the heart is only speaking what's inside. So if we're always complaining, if we're always being negative around other people, it's always, oh, I'm tired, mm, I'm sick, I don't want to go, you know, to work, I don't want to do this. It, no. God did not call us to complain. He called us, even through the hard times, He called us to stand out, to live that extraordinary life. We're not supposed to complain. If we have some concerns, we need to pray. Amen. Um, so, so, I mean, my message is just to press on God and to go and save and really minister to other people that are around us. So yeah, I'm done. Praise the Lord.